Good morning. It's 726. I'm Hannah Knowles. Will, we'll have your forecast in just a moment. But first, the top stories we're following this morning. That would measure the flooding that we're seeing here on Eagle and Crooked Lake. Now, homeowners have been working at this next step for some time, sending around petitions. And you can see here behind me, some of them even now using sandbags to keep that water from entering their home. And as you can see, the snow is still coming down really hard. And it doesn't look like it's going to be letting up anytime soon. Now, the big issue this morning is the visibility. In 2015, city officials wanted to know what the demand would look like to live in downtown Kalamazoo come 2020. Fast forward five years, the results are in, and here's how they stack up. We're going to turn it on, so heads up in the studio. It's really loud. It scared me the first time. I'm going to buckle up, and we're going to give this a shot. I won't be able to hear you, so here we go. One second. You ready? Okay. To become a substitute teacher in the state of Michigan, the Department of Education requires you have at least 60 college credits and a 2.0 GPA. However, that does not need to be in any specific major. Thousands are waking up without power this morning following last night's severe weather and the storms aren't over yet. I mean, just take a look at what's behind me. We are here in Kent County. Let's break down the millage proposal so you know what it means when you see it on the ballot next month. The average home in Kalamazoo County costs around $150,000. Divide that by half. That's your taxable value. The disease has killed more than 3,200 people, including 11 in the United States. Vice President Mike Pence is meeting with leaders in the cruise ship industry this weekend. He says there's a push to expand testing. Picture this, you're leaving your house to start your day. You slip and fall on ice and you hurt yourself. Now we all know living in Michigan that icy and snowy conditions are a given, but who's responsible if the sidewalks aren't clear? You may have noticed a majority of our team is working from home, never coming into the television station. And under Michigan's new stay at home order, our team is deemed essential workers and we take our duty to give you important information to keep you and your family safe very seriously. Was it worth it for the city to invest 10 years, millions of dollars to now have empty apartments sitting and not being filled? Internationally, the coronavirus continues to spread. Here's video showing empty streets in the normally busy city of Venice. President Trump is encouraging people to remain calm. You've been waiting years and now sports gambling is legal in the state of Michigan. Firekeepers Hotel and Casino taking the next step in this process. They just recently installed these sports betting windows and it's a holiday tradition that can stand the test of time. I don't really know if I'm a fan of it though. I don't know if it can stand the test of time. It's <laughs> National Fruitcake Day. The Portage store is left with a skeleton crew after much of its staff walked out. Now this after the company announced its impending closure on Thursday. All travelers over the age of 18 must have one of these to fly. You can see that gold star. That's what sets the real ID apart from past driver's license. U.S. Senator Gary Peters expressing his concerns over the deadlines. Make sure they look both ways before they cross the crosswalk. Put those distractions away and stay alert. And better yet, if there's a crossing guard, wait for their instructions. I'll send it back to you in the studio reporting live in Kalamazoo. Hannah Knowles. News Channel 3. West Michigan education leaders are not afraid to talk about the difficulties they face every day. With less students pursuing education as a career, it's no secret our state needs teachers. But how schools are filling that gap has soon to be instructors worried. For teachers, we're not in it for the money, you know, we're in it for for the kids, but you still have to be able to support yourself and make a living. Alex Bohr is a senior at Western Michigan University. He's set to graduate in April, but his career has been a long time coming. For me, teaching's always been something I wanted to go into ever since I was a little kid. Like, I was that kid who would come home from school and then go upstairs and play school in his room all afternoon. Bohr says he's learning teaching is not what he always dreamt it would be. The pay is low and the benefits aren't as great as they used to be, and with so many cuts and different things and just kind of the strain on the profession people are leaving. There is a huge teacher shortage going on right now. There's, you know, the profession isn't as appreciated as I think it should be. It's a shortage education leaders say they've seen coming for years. We're starting to see a downward trend with enrollment in our teacher education programs. Regina Nelson, the professor and chair for the education department at Western, says there are less candidates entering the pipeline. This is forcing schools to fill empty teacher positions with long-term substitutes. She says not all subs are created equally. 
To become a substitute teacher in the state of Michigan, the Department of Education requires you have at least 60 college credits and a 2.0 GPA. However, that does not need to be in any specific major. You also must pass a background check, but you're not required to have a teaching certificate. Some substitutes have them, but that's not always the case. It is a band-aid in that it is a temporary solution to a long-term problem. So eventually what you want to have in the classroom is someone who's fully certified. Christopher Aganagua is the principal at Loy Norris High School. He says finding qualified applicants is a daily struggle. There are some days we may have three or four unfilled positions for substitute teachers in this building. Right now, Aganagua has one long-term sub, but says due to funding, there's not much consistency in educators. And that becomes a problem. It's a supervision issue. It's an instructional issue. And then what we're forced to do um, in middle and high schools is teachers then are pulled out of their planning periods to go cover that classroom. Bohr says as a teaching candidate, he's already helping fill the shortage by subbing when he can. It would be great to have more qualified and experienced subs, but with as short as they are on subs, I mean, beggars can't be choosers and they'd rather have somebody in there than nobody. Michigan ranks 33rd out of 50 when it comes to teacher salaries. The average public school teacher in America makes $60,000 a year. For a closer look at the decline in students pursuing education careers and how long-term substitutes are used in classrooms, head to our website, www.mt.com. Hannah Knowles, News Channel 3. Yeah, the city of Kalamazoo, home to more than 75,000 people and growing fast. This building behind me, just one of the many new apartment buildings in the downtown area. And just like any other city, officials say as the area starts to expand, housing becomes a major concern. Three. <laughs> you see it everywhere. New buildings popping up, old ones being torn down. With new development comes more people and a need for housing. I think where our biggest barrier in Kalamazoo is, there's not a lot of choices. It's either, you know, a hundred year old house in Vine or it's an apartment downtown. You know, there's kind of like nothing much in between. In 2015, city officials wanted to know what the demand would look like to live in downtown Kalamazoo come 2020. Fast forward five years, the results are in and here's how they stack up. The study looks at four areas that make up the city of Kalamazoo, the Vine neighborhood, Portage Street Corridor, the heart of downtown and the north side. Data predicted the demand would require more than 1,400 new urban housing units. This includes 675 apartments, 140 townhomes, 100 lofts or condos, and 75 single-family homes. However, fast forward to now, that's not what's happening in the city. No townhouses have been built. No loft condos have been built. Instead, about 500 new apartments are on the market and 10 single-family homes, none of which fall into the affordable housing category. Are we needing these high-end luxury apartments? I think that's what we're trying to get at as well. Like, What is the price point that these apartments need to be at for affordability? Meet Greg Taylor. Unfortunately, it costs almost as much to build in Kalamazoo as it does to build in Chicago. He's an owner of Kalamazoo's newest and most expensive apartment building, The Exchange. The reality is we have to have those types of rental rates to afford to be able to build a project like this, which this project is a $54 million project. As construction wraps up, we're trying to play this out to, to, to see uh, just how much demand is, is down here. He's working to finish leasing the apartments and find businesses to fill the empty spaces. A one-bedroom apartment can cost you an average of 1500 bucks. a two-bedroom jumping to three grand. It's going to take a little bit of time to absorb all of these units, but more and more, um, I'm completely convinced that we're building into the right trend. But the question on many residents' minds... Was it worth it for the city to invest 10 years, millions of dollars, to now have empty apartments sitting and not being filled? You have to take some risks in terms of, you know, it was an empty parking lot, kind of blighting in the middle of the city. Our hope is always that you know, those apartments will fill, that people will find Kalamazoo attractive. 
The city is working to fill the affordable housing gap here in the downtown area. Two projects currently in the works are slated to be completed by 2021. You can learn more about those on our website. That's WWMT.com. Reporting live in Kalamazoo, Hannah Knowles, News Channel 3. Business leaders around Kalamazoo say educators are preparing kids for college, but they're not getting them ready for the workforce. That's why Kalamazoo County voters will see a millage increase proposal to build and staff a technical education center for the K-RESA service area. Uh, kids cannot be what they cannot see. Dave Campbell, the superintendent for K-RESA, says the surrounding counties already have tech centers and Kalamazoo is falling behind. The economy has changed so much. We need so many more young people going into the, the skilled trades, into health care. The $164 million coming from the tax would provide hands-on training for juniors and seniors in high school. It's critically important for young people to have a plan and to, to have some hope. And there's just too many young people that are not engaging in education, not engaging in work. From manufacturing jobs to welding to medical health professions, Campbell says students can try it all. We are talking about third graders and frankly kindergartners first, second, third, fourth, fifth on up being exposed to the kinds of careers that they have available to them. Let's break down the millage proposal so you know what it means when you see it on the ballot next month. The average home in Kalamazoo County costs around $150,000. Divide that by half, that's your taxable value. A one mil increase would be $6.25 a month if this passes or $75 a year. John Gisler, the South County Commissioner for Kalamazoo, says programs like these are needed, but he's not a supporter. It's premature at best, and it's basically piling money on a table and saying, trust us, we know what we're doing. He says he needs more details. There's no mention of buildings to be built. There's no mention of instructors to be hired. There's no mention of how the transportation is going to be done differently. Campbell says he believes this will move the economy forward. And we're excited that that uh, if people vote yes, then um, if the millage passes, then we may be able to provide that for kids here. In Kalamazoo, Hannah Knowles, News Channel 3.